a face mask or something because I swear I look like I've aged like 10 years in a month. Hey warriors, so it is Friday night and I am exhausted. It's very rare to have a week of being on call where I have crisis calls almost every single night, but um, this was one of those weeks. That on top of the fact that I'm still not sleeping well and I look like a member of The Walking Dead. So to make my editing easier for tomorrow, I am just going to film my Q&A and just edit that because it shouldn't take much editing at all. And that will be my video for tomorrow because I've already missed two vlogs this week and let's just say I am failing at Vlogmas. Well, I mean, technically a lot of people only do like the 12 days of Vlogmas from like the 12th to the 24th and tomorrow's technically the 12th. So technically, if I went tomorrow or Saturday all the way through Christmas Eve, I would have technically finished the traditional Vlogmas. So that's going to be my goal. Did I mention that I'm tired? <laughs> oh, look at, I look horrible. Ugh. Okay. And I just wanted to start this Q&A with a quick disclaimer, and that is that I will probably not be answering any questions that have to do with anything like religion, politics, or um, social justice issues. And it's not because I don't have opinions or I don't think that these things are important to talk about. It's because of my profession. Even as someone who has tried to take precautions to prevent my clients from finding me on the internet, I am still posting content in a very popular niche, you know, health, weight loss, and fitness. Like it's, it's, there is definitely a chance that a client or one of their family members that I also work with could find me someday. And so I have to kind of be cognizant of that. And as a therapist, it's really important that I remain neutral on topics that are really sensitive and things that people tend to be very passionate about and you might be wondering like why why would that matter and just to give you an example of why that's important let's say that a therapist posted content around a sensitive issue like again religion politics or social justice issues and their values just happen to be in like direct contrast to a family that they're working with and the family finds that content and there goes your rapport and working relationship down the drain, like literally. Or it could even happen, um, I work a lot with youth and families, right? And I work with a lot of youth who are raised by like their grandparents or their great, great aunt, where there's a multi-generation like age gap between the two. So it's very common for the youth and their caregivers to have opposing like values and beliefs when it comes to like those hot button issues. So again, let's say that the therapist posts something that happens to be in line with whatever the youth's value system is, right? And then the youth takes that to their grandparents and says, here, grandma, even my therapist agrees with me. Or vice versa, the caregiver might find something that aligns with their values and belief system and they say, here, kid, even your therapist agrees with me. And again, there goes your rapport and your working relationship down the drain. So when we had our training around our online presence as mental health workers, I mean, obviously we're going to have our own social media accounts and it's not like our agency um, expects us not to have an online presence, but they did strongly encourage us that when it comes to those very sensitive issues like religion, politics, and social justice issues to be very careful when it comes to those things. Um, because again, those are topics that people tend to get very passionate and sensitive around. And it's really important for therapists or just mental health workers in general to be able to maintain that neutral presence in the therapeutic relationship. So is there a huge likelihood of a client or their family members finding me on YouTube? Probably not. But again, I'm in a very big popular niche and it's better to just be safe than sorry. And I know some of you are probably thinking like, really, like how often does that actually happen? A lot more than you would think. In fact, I know like three coworkers personally 
who have had that happen. I mean, not because they were posting videos on YouTube, but because their clients found them on like Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Especially considering that youth and young adults, which is my primary population that I work with, um, tend to be better than like police detectives when it comes to internet stalking. All right, so the first question is from Christina Figueroa. And okay, just putting this out there, I apologize in advance if I butcher anybody's names. Christina asks, what are your titles, certifications in mental health therapy and counseling? So Christina, I am an MSW and I am currently working towards my LICSW, which is a licensed social worker, um, which basically means that I am eligible for going into private practice. Um, but I also have certifications in things like um, DBT, CBT, and FBT. I feel like there's more. <laughs> there is more. I just can't recall. And okay, I'm like putting out acronyms like anybody else like knows what that means. So FBT is family behavioral therapy. DBT is dialectical behavioral therapy and CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy. I'm also a certified peer counselor. Oh my gosh, man. It's been a long time. Okay. I've been working in this field like almost nine years. So uh, yeah. <laughs> And she also asked, do you think your clients watch her videos? Um, so I kind of already answered this already. I have definitely taken precautions to try and decrease the likelihood that my clients will be able to find me. Uh, Laura Lynn is not my real name. Okay, Laura is, but Lynn is not my real last name. Um, and really the only people where I live that know that I have a YouTube channel is my family and my brother's girlfriend. Like that is it. I haven't told any of my coworkers, any of my friends, like literally a total of not even 10 people living in the town that I live in. No. And they're all very private of that fact. Now that being said, like I said earlier, I'm making videos in a very popular niche okay health fitness and weight loss so there is definitely a chance that one of my clients or their family members who i also work because i work with youth and families primarily um there is definitely a chance that someone's gonna find me someday or multiple someone's malika burley asked are you dating or in a serious relationship if so will we get to meet that person so malika i am not currently dating anyone so there's no one to meet. If you're not, do you plan to date when you have time? <laughs> what time, Malika? <laughs> um, I feel like that is a whole story time that would need its own video just to talk about my life and dating and the idea of marriage and everything else because it's complicated. There you go. That's my official answer. It's complicated. My Bloody Diary asked, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? Name three places. Ugh. Three places? Do I really have to limit it to three? I'll try to keep it limited to three, but no promises. Um, Vienna, Austria, Paris, does the entire country of Italy count? Like just, just travel the entire country? <laughs> um, I think those would probably be some of my top three, but I just, I wanna travel everywhere. Um, I wanna go to Ireland, I want to go to Morocco, um, Turkey, Romania. I want to travel like the entire Asian continent. Um, I want to go to Egypt, except for the scorpions and the snakes that kind of freaks me out. But yeah, I would just, I would love to travel the world, but those are probably like my top three. Um, oh, well, I don't know. Prince Edward Island is probably up there as well, but that's because I'm an Anne of Green Gables fanatic and I have been since I was like eight or nine years old. So it's definitely up there at the top. My Bloody Diary also asked, if you could speak another language, which would you want to know? <sighs> that depends. Am I being practical or not practical? <laughs> because if I'm being practical, I would definitely 100% say Spanish because it would make my job a lot easier. Um, but if I'm not being practical, 
I would say Korean because I don't know there. I just find Korean beautiful. I also find Spanish beautiful. Um, but yeah, if there was any Asian language that I would want to learn just based on how it sounds alone, I would definitely say Korean. Enjoying the little thing asked, what is your dream vacation? My dream vacation would be traveling all of the Christmas markets in Europe and maybe staying in one of those like ski villages in the Alps. Yeah, that would be my dream vacation is just spending Christmas in Europe and traveling around. Heather L asked, what is your biggest physical insecurity? <sighs> my biggest physical insecurity. Um, well, right now, my face, because like I said, it just, oh, I look disgusting. Um, I, and I know a big part of it is, again, I'm still retaining water, so I'm swollen and I'm exhausted because I'm still not sleeping well. Uh, and I'm actually considering in January doing a um, another round of a no added sugar challenge because my skin looks so much better and I just physically felt so much better when I was doing the no added sugar. So I am very seriously considering doing another round of that and maybe inviting you guys to do it with me if you would like. But other than that, my biggest physical insecurity, um, I don't, I mean, I guess you could say my weight. Um, but I don't feel like it's, it's not an insecurity to the point where it gets in my way. You know, when you have like those insecurities where you actually will like not do things because of that, um, because you're embarrassed or ashamed or anything like I don't feel like it's that, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, a, I'm insecure about my weight. <laughs> Heather also asked, do you want the whole marriage kids white picket fence thing one day? You know, again, I feel like. That part of my life, <laughs> you would need an entire video in and of itself to really talk about. Um, if you asked me that question, like even five years ago, I probably would have said, hell no. I feel like I'm slowly starting to like crawl across the spectrum from like hell no to hell yes. Um, but then I'm also worried that if I let myself get into the hell yes category that I'm going to be really disappointed because my doctors have said in the past that um, the chances of me being able to get pregnant are extremely slim with my PCOS and my endometriosis and all of the issues that I've had. Um, and there's also the fact that I'm I'm in my 30s and that window is shutting and it's shutting rapidly. So, and Heather also wants to know what is your biggest pet peeve? <sighs> Hypocrisy. I <laughs> I hate those people who are like do as I say not as I do. It just it's grating. Megan Marina wants to know which Harry Potter houses are you a combination of and why and what's your patronus animal? Um Yes, hello, Megan, you're my new best friend, just because you asked this question. I don't know combination wise, um, but I do know that I am a Ravenclaw, you know, loud and proud. Um, if I had to guess what my combination would be. Uh, I don't know, cause I don't know that I'm really, I don't feel like I'm, I'm friendly enough to be a Hufflepuff. <laughs> Um, Slytherin, maybe, maybe a little bit of Slytherin. I feel like I like the ambitious side of Slytherin, like the not going to let anyone or anything like stand in my way. Like I'm going to get it done. Um, I mean, obviously I don't think that I'm to the point where I would like step on others to get it done. Like some Slytherins, but I definitely feel like I have, I have some of those qualities <laughs> that, um, are stereotypical Slytherins. So maybe like Ravenclaw and Slytherin combination, which, wow, it, now that I'm thinking about it, probably makes me sound really bad. <laughs> um, as for Patronus, I'm trying to remember what my Patronus was. It was some sort of cat but it had a specific name and I don't remember what the name of it was, but it was like a, when I did the Patronus quiz, it was a specific type of cat. Mama Warrior wants to know, how did you muster up the courage to start your own vlog and put your vulnerability on display? Noting there are many who judge, don't judge, but mock or question your accountability motives. How do you stay the course and keep on keeping on? 
Well, Mama Warrior, um, how did I muster the courage? I just knew I needed to try something different and to have a higher level of accountability. Um, and I really just wanted to meet others going through the same journey that I was and to be able to have a, a bigger support system. Um, because, I mean, obviously my family, Mama Warrior included, are very supportive. Um, but it's it's a different type of support when it's actually people who are where you're at and they, they understand that or they've recently been where you're at. As for how I keep on keeping on with the people who question me, I mean, usually when I read a comment or a DM or an email where people are going off on me, I mean, I, I give myself a minute or two to be like irritated or angry or sad or whatever. Um, but then I'm just like, eh. <laughs> um, because at the end of the day, this is my journey and I have to do what works for me. SAPN19 asked, I think your mom mentioned that you're a baker. What are your favorite things to bake? When I bake, I prefer baking like cakes and cupcakes um, and cookies. I like baking cookies. She also asked, you obviously love dogs. Are you going to get your own fur baby anytime soon? Ugh, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, I found out that I'm allergic to dogs. So, I mean, I can handle like the short haired dogs like Lucy and Bane are short haired in like short bursts as long as I'm not living with them. Um, I'm, I'm okay and I just have to make sure that I wash my hands and everything. Um, but living with them is another story. I don't even remember what my asthma specialist says happens. It was like, I get like this buildup of this, I can't remember what it was called. It was a certain type of allergen that like builds up in my lungs and leads to me having like asthma attacks. Um, because of my allergies and I, I mean, technically I could get a hypoallergenic dog like rocket cause rocket is hypoallergenic, but dang, are they expensive? Like rocket, you, you've seen him, like he's a tiny dog and he was like 1500 bucks and I don't got that type of money, at least not right now. Um, your family is so cute. What are your favorite family traditions? My favorite family traditions are just when we get together and we play like board games and card games and just have fun and laugh and Sunday dinners. Do you have any hidden talents? <laughs> Do I have any hidden talents? I can balk like a chicken pretty dang good and I can do a lamb or a sheep, I guess. Um, I can also do a really good Wicked Witch of the East. <laughs> Shinio said, um, I don't know what type of therapist you are, what types of things you treat, but are there sometimes cases that really get to you because they are so intense, shocking, or devastating? <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> how do you deal with them on a personal level and how do you separate work from your personal life? It's hard. Um, and I was actually talking to my group today um, about how it's even gotten more hard since I started working primarily from home because at least when I was at the office at the end of the day the door shut behind you and it's just you leave work at work but when work is also being done at home it's really hard to leave work at work so yeah, that's something that I'm struggling with currently. I just think it would be so difficult for me to have someone tell me about horrible things that they have gone through and then come back home and have dinner with friends like nothing ever happened. I don't think I could do that. It's rough. It's rough sometimes. Like I said, especially when it has to do with like um, child abuse. Yeah. One stubborn redhead asked, what's your biggest Christmas wish for yourself? Ooh, my biggest Christmas wish. Oh, my, absolutely. My biggest Christmas wish would be an end to the C word. Like, I would just, I just want things to like have at least some semblance of normalcy again. Yeah, that's my biggest Christmas wish right now. But if it's for my, okay, she specifically asked for myself. Um, then I would just say that my biggest Christmas wish for myself is that I stay the course and I make this weight loss journey a success 
and not just a success, but one that I maintain for the long haul. Claudia San Diego said, I have no questions. Love your haircut. Thank you. Janet Huffman, would you ever consider running? And if so, what's the furthest distance that you think you'd be willing to run? I would absolutely consider running. I actually have dreams where I'm running. I love it because in the dreams, it's so like visceral and real. Like I can feel it in my muscles and it feels so good. And I would love to be able to run. Um, don't know that that will ever happen with my knee, but maybe we'll see. As for like the longest distance, I mean, it would be nice to be able to go for a run with my mom and she usually runs like anywhere between like four to eight miles. So Janet also asked, has your mom being thin had any impact on your self image when struggling with weight? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, she's always been thin, like as long as I can remember. I mean, don't get me wrong. When I was a teenager, it was a little bit annoying when all of the guys thought that my mom was hot. Um, but as far as like having any impact on my own self image, I would have to say no. Would you consider a fitness challenge of doing the WAP dance? What's the WAP dance? At first I thought it was like walk away the pounds dance, but that's not it. <laughs> I don't know what that is, Janet. <laughs> Janet also asked, why did you choose to be a therapist? <laughs> Probably because in my time working in the mental health field, I have worked per, you know, like really closely with other therapists and I've really been impressed and curious by the work that they do and um, the impact that therapy can have on clients. So that's definitely a big part of why I became a therapist. Um, but I also think it's important to note that I'm not 100% sure that I want to do therapy long term. If I had my druthers, like if I had my dream job, I would be a school based social worker um, or like a college counselor. Rebecca Brown, what non scale victory are you most proud of? Ooh, probably the jumping. <laughs> If I'm being completely honest, the jumping 100%. <laughs> what non-scale victory are you most excited to hit? I would love to be able to do like more intense workouts like Taibo, Insanity, and T25. How did you decide on your goal weight? I figured that once I hit 180, so that would be 200 pounds down, um, that I would have a good idea of around how much more I would want to lose. Um, <clears throat> because I don't know, with my body type, 180 might be perfect. Like I might be like, yes, this is great. Or I might be like 150 or 160 would be perfect for me. I, you know, I don't know. So I just figured that 200 pounds down or 180 would get me to a point where I could at least be like, where do I go from here? Or do I just want to stay right here? So Yaliher Vitale asks, what is your sexual orientation? What country would you like to visit? <laughs> what country wouldn't I like to visit? Um, but the one I would like to visit the most would probably be Italy. What is your favorite animal? Definitely horses. Who do you admire? I admire a lot of people, but I think the people that I admire the most would probably be my mom and my grandma and my great great grandma, who's actually not with us anymore, but um, she was an amazing woman. JBell917 asked, What has been your funniest, most embarrassing moment regarding weight or the weight loss journey? My, I don't know. <laughs> my funniest or most embarrassing moment. I mean, getting so excited about being able to jump was kind of funny. <laughs> so I'd probably say that. Is Christmas your favorite holiday? Yes, I think so. When I was a kid, I loved Halloween, but as an adult, I don't really celebrate it anymore. I still love Halloween in general, um, but I just don't feel like it's as much of a part of my life as it was when I was a kid. So probably of the holidays that I actively celebrate, I'd probably say Christmas.
What helps you to be so confident? I don't know, J Bell. I feel like for as long as I can remember, I've had this very like who gives an F attitude. Like you like me, you like me, you don't, you don't. Um, <clears throat> now don't get me wrong. I have moments where things get to me, right? You know, and I'll even admit like sometimes I read like DMs or emails and I'm like, they get to me. Um, but I feel like I don't dwell on them. Like I have a few moments where I feel a little bit down or, you know, I, I get in my feelings a little bit and in my thoughts but I get over it like super quickly and I just move on. And I don't know what led to that. I don't know if it's nature. I don't know if it was my environment growing up as a kid. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, I have no answer for that. How old are you? I am 31 years young. Enjoying the little things asked, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Um, in five to 10 years, I would love to be working in a school setting. Uh, like I said, whether that's like high school, elementary, middle school, or even in a college setting as like a counselor. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's where I would love to be. And... Or even having my own like private practice, I could see myself doing that within the next like five to 10 years. And I also see myself like having a family, like whether that's getting married and having kids or adopting. And I definitely see myself in the maintenance stage of my weight loss journey. Wailber, sorry, Wailber asks, what studies did you do for college, etc.? So I got my bachelor's in psychology with an English minor, and then I got my master's in social work. Iolande asks, any plans on traveling after all the scariness is over? I would love to, if I can afford it, 100%. Have you traveled much in your life? I have never traveled outside of the US, um, but I mean, I've been to my fair share of states and done my fair share of traveling. Do you plan on settling where you are to be near your family? I have no idea <laughs> um, because I know that my mom and my stepdad like want to retire somewhere else. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's definitely something that I've been thinking about. I will likely stay in Washington. I just don't know where that will be or when I would move. So we'll see. Sarah V said, you seem like someone I'd love to go on a pub crawl with. I think it would be epic. If you're ever in England, let me know. Well, Sarah, I am truly honored. Um, I'd probably have to be like the designated driver though because I don't drink. So <laughs> I will just do the crawling and you can do the drinking. How about that? Candy Carrier asked, I would definitely like to know how you managed to keep your private life and being a therapist at the same time. And on another note, did you try any vegan recipes? Um, how you managed to keep your private life and being a therapist at the same time. It's really about leaving work at work, which again, like I said earlier, it's harder now that I'm working primarily from home. So that's definitely been interesting. Um, but it's just, it's setting those boundaries with myself that when I leave, I turn my work cell off, I turn my work computer off, and unless I'm on call, which I have been this week, and that's just been so much fun. <laughs> um, but other than that, I'm done. Did you try any vegan recipes? I haven't had a chance to try any yet. <laughs> um, I have to be in the mood to try new recipes just because I get a little, I don't, is it just me? But I feel like I get a little bit like stressed out when I'm trying recipes that I've never tried before. And so I really, really have to be in the mood and have like the energy to do that. Otherwise I just stick with my go-tos.